Hello? Hello, Neo. Do you know who this is? Keanu Reeves is a Canadian actor, director, producer, rock musician, businessman, and just an amazing person. There are legends about his shyness and kind heart. His charm and bright appearance drive women of all ages crazy. During his acting career, he starred in more than a hundred films, among which were real masterpieces. This video is about the path to stardom of one of the brightest men of our time. Keanu Reeves, How Hollywood's Most Wholesome Guy Lives and How He Spends His Millions Keanu Charles Reeves was born in Beirut, Lebanon on September 2, 1964, in the family of an English woman, Patricia Bond, and an American, Samuel Reeves, who had a wild cocktail of Portuguese, Chinese, and Hawaiian blood. By the way, Keanu got his unusual name in tribute to the origin of his dad. Translated from Hawaiian, it means cool mountain wind. At the time of the meeting in 1960, Patricia was working as a dancer and Sam was doing odd jobs, including some shady ones. The man didn't have a decent education. He even received a school certificate in prison while serving time for drug trafficking. Over time, he managed to get a job as a geologist. The young family's life was hectic, with constant moving, and two years after the birth of their son, they found themselves in Sydney, Australia. Their youngest daughter, Kim, was born here in 1966. Soon, the father of the family left Patricia and the children. Keanu was so frustrated and resentful that even as he grew older, he did not resume contact with his dad, cutting off all his attempts at bonding. After Australia, the Reeves family moved first to New York, where Patricia became a successful costume designer before settling in Toronto, Canada. She married three more times, gave birth to a daughter, Karina Miller, from her third husband, but all her marriages inevitably collapsed. Studying was not easy for Keanu, as the boy was diagnosed with dyslexia, which they tried to fight with the help of speech therapists and psychologists. But the disorder is called genius disease for a reason. Reeves read a lot of books, including all of Proust, thanks to which he cultivated perseverance, diligence, and trained his memory close to a phenomenal level. Besides, he was an excellent chess player, and as a child, beat some adults earning a dollar for a win. Keanu still loves to read newspapers with chess puzzles on the pages. And what Canadian boy doesn't play backyard hockey? Reeves was noticed by a local coach and invited to one of the schools in his childhood team he was a goalkeeper, but according to his teammates, he didn't have the physique necessary for this role and compensated for this with amazing agility and jumping ability, for which he received the nickname The Wall. By the way, he is still in the International Hockey Player Database and enjoys playing for himself and rooting for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Apart from sports, Keanu attended Drama Club. After an injury, Keanu had to give up on a great future in hockey, so he concentrated on his second hobby. At the age of nine, he first tried acting. He played in the musical comedy Damn Yankees, and at the age of 15, he appeared on stage as the Shakespeare's Mercutio. At the age of 17, the guy dropped out of school and left home for his girlfriend named Pat. He never received the certificate. Keanu had to pay for his free life by doing any part-time job, including mowing lawns and other people's lawns and cooking spaghetti in Italian cafes. In 1983, the young man appeared in a Coca-Cola commercial as a cyclist. Reeves still remembers that shoot with warmth and laughter, because they had to shoot in winter, pretending that they were languishing from the heat. After that, he appeared in many more Nave commercials, including advertising for Canon cameras and Japanese whiskey Suntory. At the same time, Keanu took part in small TV series and short films, and his first notable role was in the film Youngblood, where he played the goalkeeper of a hockey team and received a fee of $3,000. After the film was released in 1986, Keanu, with the help of his first stepfather, Broadway director Paul Aaron, received an American green card and moved to Los Angeles. There, he got an agent, and on his advice, used his pseudonym for the first time, because he considered the name Keanu too exotic. Therefore, in some films, he appeared as Norman Reeves and Chuck Spadina in honor of one of the streets in Toronto. The end of the 80s was the time for a good start in the big movie for Keanu. In 1988, he appeared in such films as Dangerous Liaisons, The Night Before, Permanent Record, and The Prince of Pennsylvania. Then he played in Parenthood, Life Underwater, and Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, and then in the TV series of the same name and in its sequel, 
After the movies, I love you to death, tune in tomorrow, my own private Idaho, the premiere of the action movie Point Break became a real breakthrough. Patrick Swayze was his partner on the set, but Keanu was so good on his role that he got the MTV Movie Award for Most Desirable Male. You mad? Yeah, I'm mad! Good and mad, Dad! What do you want to do about it? It feels good, doesn't it? Like you're still alive, right? Yeah! Well, since you're still alive and you're not in the box just yet, why don't you tell me this theory of yours and we'll go get these guys? The role in Bram Stoker's Dracula, which was released in 1992, was also a great success. Interestingly enough, Reeves and Winona Ryder's characters were married by a real Romanian priest, and now it is their favorite subject for jokes to call themselves legally husband and wife. In 1993, even Cowgirls Get the Blues, Much Ado About Nothing, and the colorful philosophical drama Little Buddha were released on the screens. For the main role, Keanu had to lose a lot of weight, sitting on a strict diet of oranges and water. The reaction of the audience and critics was polarized. Some were delighted, while others couldn't figure out who the film was made for and criticized the actor's performance. A short but apt review of the film came from the Dalai Lama himself, who offered modest praise but remarked that Buddha could not be small, pointing to the film's title. I've never seen it. I've not even seen my own city. I must see the world, Yashodara, with my own eyes. The very next year, the actor broke into the world of A-list celebrities after his role in the movie Point Break. The director of the action movie Speed couldn't imagine anyone else for this role aside from Keanu. The film was a huge success, and his partner was Sandra Bullock, with whom Keanu is still good friends. Although it was rumored that there was a fleeting romance between the performers of the main roles, Reeves received a fee of one million for this role. Shot me. I can't believe it. I'm giving you a medal for shooting me, you little prick. Every... You told me to. Member of the Los Angeles Police Department. When the film was released, work on Johnny Mnemonic was actually finished. However, the Sony officials, seeing the success of Speed, demanded a reshoot of many of the scenes in order to add fights and shootings. Initially, the movie was supposed to be an atmospheric fantasy film with noir and cyberpunk vibes. Must have been pretty good at memorizing, huh? Implant. Wed wired. I had to dump a chunk of long-term memory. You had to dump a chunk of what? My childhood. Your childhood? The actor's next works were A Walk in the Clouds, Chain Reaction, Feeling Minnesota, and The Last Time I Committed Suicide. The pearl of Keanu's filmography is rightfully considered the mystical thriller The Devil's Advocate, released in 1997. What are you? Oh! I have so many names! See. Call me Dad. In order to participate in the filming, he had to refuse the offer of a role in the sequel of Speed, as well as part of his fee, which amounted to eight million, to ensure Al Pacino's participation in the project. Two years later, the world was shocked by the release of the cult sci-fi thriller The Matrix. The preparation for the shooting was tremendous. The actors trained for several months, and just before the start of practice, Keanu injured his cervical vertebrae, which further inconvenienced him. He had to wear a special bandage for several days, and he had to make another sacrifice for the scene of Neo's awakening in the capsule. The actor lost almost 15 pounds and shaved his whole body, including eyebrows. Wow, that sounds like a really good deal. But I think I got a better one. How about I give you the finger and you give me my phone call? In the early 2000s after The Matrix, the public expected something extraordinary from the actor, but what followed was a series of quite average films. Among them are The Replacement with a fee of 12.5 million, Hardball, The Gift, and The Watcher, in which Keanu didn't even want to participate. However, his insidious agent forged his signature on the contract, and Reeves reasoned that it was easier to act in the film than to butt heads with the traitor in court. In 2001, the melodrama Sweet November was released, which was not a huge hit, but it was very important for Keanu, who had suffered a personal tragedy and really wanted to vent his feelings on the screen. What do you do, by the way? I'm in advertising. Advertising? So you enjoy? People tend to enjoy what they're really good at. This was almost the only time when Keanu himself was chasing the director, persuading him to give him the lead role. The fact is that in 1998, at one of the parties, he met his sister's friend Jennifer Syme. 
The passion blossomed and Reeves, who had convinced everyone that he was a hardened bachelor, bonded with the girl with all his soul. They even decided to become parents, but a week before the birth, the baby girl, whom they decided to name Ava Archer, suffered a cardiac arrest. The actor withdrew into himself, and his lover decided to fight the grief with alcohol. That's what eventually led to her death. In April 2001, Syme died in a car accident while returning from a drunken party. After these tragic events, the actor could not dare to have a serious relationship for a long time, limiting himself to short-term romances or friendships with women. After he survived this series of misfortunes, Keanu took a new job. In 2003, the drama Something's Gotta Give was released, as well as two sequels of The Matrix, at once reloaded in Revolutions, which followed the story of the war between people and machines. You tell me we'll make it, I'll believe you. We'll make it. We have to. The films grossed a very decent figure at the box office, exceeding $1 billion, and Keanu received 15% of that in addition to his $30 million fee for both movies. However, he took a risk during production by turning down $38 million to have the money invested in creating costumes and special effects. As time has shown, this investment has more than paid off. After that, Keanu had a forced break from work because his sister Kim was diagnosed with advanced leukemia. The girl received this devastating diagnosis back in 1993, but for many years, she managed to keep the disease under control. In order to help her, Reeves stopped all activities and went to the Swiss city of Montreux, where he stayed with his sister constantly. Fortunately, the disease was defeated, and now Keanu is an active participant in charity events aimed at fighting cancer. Release of the superhero action movie Constantine, based on the mystical comic book Hellblazer, took place only two years later. This is Constantine. John Constantine. Asshole. The film didn't collect awards and a lot of money, pleasing only loyal fans of Keanu. However, the movie has a chance for revenge. The Warner Bros. Film Company announced the production of a sequel in September 2022. In the same period, the movies Thumbsucker, Ellie Parker, A Scanner Darkly, The Lake House, and Street Kings were released. The 2008 movie The Day the Earth Stood Still became special for Keanu because, unlike other works, no one competed with him in casting. The producer of the film, Erwin Stoff, couldn't imagine anyone else in the role of the alien Klaatu. The filming turned out to be very exciting for the actor. He improvised a lot and even added a few lines to the script. Perhaps this practice served as a starting point for his future directorial career. In 2013, he directed the film of Man of Tai Chi, where he also starred. At the same time, Reeves kept starring in movies by other directors. He has appeared in such films as The Private Lives of Pippa Lee, Henry's Crime, Generation Um, and 47 Ronin. The next cinematic masterpiece in which Keanu starred was loved by both the public and critics. For the role of a retired assassin, he even received a rare positive Golden Raspberry for restoring the actor's reputation, Razzie Redeemer Award. The action movie John Wick served as the birth of a media franchise, which included films and television series, comics, soundtracks, and computer games. The fourth movie is about to be released, and the fifth one has been announced. Noise complaint. Noise complaint. You, uh, working again? No, just sorting some stuff out. In the following years, the actor starred in the films Knock Knock, The Whole Truth, Exposed, The Neon Demon, The Bad Batch, Replicas to the Bone, Siberia, Destination Wedding, Always Be My Maybe, Between Two Ferns, The Movie, and Bill and Ted Face the Music. There is also quite a unique film in Keanu's filmography. This is a crime comedy Keanu, which tells a story about the adventures of two friends saving their kitten. The name and voice of the kitten are Reeves, and by the way, this is not the only time when the actor voiced characters. For example, in Toy Story 4, he voiced Duke Kaboom. The year 2021 saw the release of the Wachowski sisters' movie, The Matrix Resurrections. I felt either I'm having a mental breakdown again, or I'm living inside a computer-generated reality that has imprisoned me again. <laughs> And a year earlier, to the delight of gamers, Cyberpunk 2077 was released. It was a video game created by Polish developers based on a tabletop game published in 1988. Keanu played one of the main characters in the game and appeared in a fast-paced promo video. Test of a person's true value? Death. Facing it. Staring it down. You still got a chance to be somebody. 
Keanu is one of the richest actors in Hollywood. His fortune is estimated at $380 million, while the ratio of his one-time fee to the total amount of his earnings is a historical record that no one has been able to break since 2003. Reeves is happy to spend his money on gifts, so almost the entire crew of the first Matrix was lucky enough to fall under his good graces. After filming ended, Keanu reportedly gave away $75 million, making costume and special effects artists millionaires overnight. After filming Reloaded, Keanu gave each of the stuntmen a Harley. For quite a while, he didn't even care about his living conditions and considered it normal to just rent an apartment or a hotel room. Keanu got a permanent home only in 2003, but he chose a very impressive villa he built back in 1988 in the Hollywood Hills in Los Angeles, costing nearly $5 million. The property is spread over an area of an acre and consists of a house made in constructivist style, a garage, a pond with decorative fish, and a long swimming pool. Keanu is known to create the interiors of his home with his own hands. He chose the finishing materials, selected the furniture, textiles, and decorations himself. At the same time, Reeves didn't build any fences, hedges, and he even used to keep his doors open. As for the cars, Keanu is an avid Porsche fan. He has a beautiful Carrera 4S in his garage. As a child, according to rumors, Keanu couldn't choose between a career as a nuclear physicist and a car racer. It is safe to say that he has fully realized his passion for speed and roaring engines. And if Porsche is just a passion for him, motorcycles can be called his true love. When he was 22, a pretty girl driving a Kawasaki Enduro caught his eye. Keanu borrowed a bike from her and asked her to teach him how to ride it. Since then, there have been many bikes in his life, including Kawasaki, Suzuki, and Harley. In 2011, all this resulted in the creation of his own brand. The Arch Motorcycle Custom Bike Company is run by just two people, Keanu Reeves and mechanic Guard Hollinger. All in all, the actor can easily travel by public transport as well. He could often be seen among subway passengers and some even witnessed his gentlemanly behavior. Keanu also dresses quite simply and only as he feels comfortable. These are mostly stretched jeans, t-shirts, dark colored jackets, and heavy boots. He might even show up to a prestigious award in his old sneakers. However, in 2019, Reeves became the face of the St. Laurent Fashion House, thanks to which fans were able to appreciate the coolest style of their favorite actor. Stunning black and white photos in which Keanu is dressed in strict trousers, shirts with a tie, and daring leather jackets were as much anticipated as his next movies. By his own admission, Reeves has now entered his most enjoyable age. He finally had a life partner with whom he began to appear in public in 2019. Keanu and the artist Alexandra Grant were friends for a long time. She even helped the actor to publish his book called Ode to Happiness. So far, the couple doesn't comment on a possible wedding, but the available photos are full of mutual affection. Keanu admits that he has become quite wise, calm, and emotionally fulfilled. He wakes up in the morning with ease and does only what he wants to do. He can go for a run or play his beloved basketball, or he can stay home and cook something delicious with his friends all day and drink Bordeaux. He may have a nice glass of whiskey with a big ice cube when he's not occupied with work. He prefers moderation in food, making sure not to overeat. His diet includes chicken, vegetables, and rice, but sometimes Keanu enjoys eating steak or pizza. Potato chips and Coke are not forbidden either. Keanu's signature dish is Belgian waffles with butter and maple syrup. The actor calls this combination of proper diet and the occasional forbidden food the recipe of his youth. Sometimes his reservedness and private nature is perceived by people as a manifestation of some kind of emotional suffering. Thus, on June 15, 2010, the photo of Keanu taken by a photographer from one of the tabloids spread around the world. It shows Reeves sitting on a bench with a sandwich, embodying universal melancholy and hopelessness. The photo made a lot of noise. Many people were seriously worried that there was something wrong with the celebrity. This reaction shocked the actor. It turns out he was just thinking to himself and was hungry. However, this didn't stop witty fans from creating a couple hundred memes in which thoughtful Reeves sits in the company of a variety of characters, from Stalin and Churchill to kittens and skyscraper builders in New York. They even decided to establish the Cheer Up Keanu Day, which thanks to one publication, is now celebrated every June 15. The actor himself was happy to insert an illustration with a reference to this day in his comic book, Berserker. By the way, the comic book, where the main character is based on Keanu himself, after the release in 2021, was so popular with readers that the company Netflix is making an anime series and a feature film based on it. Perhaps one day we will see Keanu Reeves on the Broadway stage, because he has a dream of playing in a musical. Why not? After all, he is not only an actor, but also a musician. In the 90s, he played bass guitar in the band Dogstar, and then he was a member of the grunge band Becky. Keanu is a star of incredible magnitude, a talented and bright actor, but in contrast to many of his colleagues, he is not arrogant. 
He is relatable and perceived by everyone as a guy next door. When he gets tired, he likes to drink hot tea with lemon and honey, and when he needs to stop and think, he sits down on a bench in the park and stares into the distance, not noticing anything around him. Unfortunately, life sometimes presents unpleasant surprises and trials that we all have to go through. At such moments, he says, don't let fear get a hold of you. Be afraid, but don't give up. Do you agree with Keanu? How Michael Douglas Lives and How Much He Earns Michael Kirk Douglas was born on September 25, 1944, in the young acting family of Kirk Douglas and Diana Dill. The boy was born in New Brunswick, New Jersey, but soon the family moved to New York. Two and a half years later, Michael had a younger brother, Joel. The family lived in a one-room apartment in the Greenwich Village area. Right now, our hero is called the heir to the show business's royal dynasty, but back then, his parents were just starting their careers. Kirk spent most of his time in California filming under a studio contract, and his marriage with Diana couldn't withstand it. Michael's parents divorced when he was six years old, and he stayed with his mother. Seven years later, she remarried. Stepfather became the first adult Michael could talk to about anything, and thanks to whom the young man felt confident for the first time. But at school, none of the teachers could restrain his violent temperament. Even though Michael studied well, he skipped classes and talked back to the teachers. For some time, the young man worked at a mobile gas station. Some days he was an employee of the month, and other days he would track cars and steal spare parts from them with his friends. In addition to his stepfather, the authority for Douglas Jr. was his father, who managed to become a movie icon for the whole of America. Michael was so impressed by Kirk's films and the time spent with him on the set during the summer holidays that he also wanted to become an actor. He often asked his father which doors to knock on to break into Hollywood, but he was categorically against his son's choice of profession. However, when Michael enrolled at the University of California as a dramatic arts major and played in theatrical productions, Kirk came to his son's every performance, no matter how busy he was. At university, Douglas became friends with Danny DeVito, who later became his flatmate. They rented an apartment in New York for $150 a month. At the same time, the young man earned a living by delivering coffee at the cinema and working behind the scenes. Nevertheless, Kirk contributed to the beginning of his son's acting career. Together, they starred in and produced the 1966 film Cast a Giant Shadow. The following roles came only several years later. In the late 60s, early 70s, Douglas starred in several TV series and films such as Hail Hero and Summer Tree. On the set, the young man met a young promising actress, Brenda Vaccaro. The couple was inseparable for six years, living like hippies and vowing eternal love to each other. Michael calls this time the most wonderful in his life. But the relationship ended abruptly. Brenda just got in the car and left. The young actor's first significant work was the role of an inspector in the TV series The Streets of San Francisco, which he received in 1972 and played for five years. I've got two eyewitnesses. What do they see? Police brutality. Oh, come on now. Joe Landers? Look, he may be a little hard-nosed, but he never manhandled anybody. I don't buy that. All right, did they see the gun go off? Not who was holding it, no. His partner on the set was Kirk Douglas, friend Carl Malden. He called Michael the son he never had and insisted on his participation in the project. Interestingly, even after moving to Hollywood, Michael continued to pay his part of the rent while DeVito remained in New York. Also in 1972, our hero appeared in the films When Michael Calls and Napoleon and Samantha. The latter has become a classic of American children's films. Later, Douglas was caught up with the work behind the scenes. He directed one of the episodes of Streets of San Francisco and began working on the film adaptation of Ken Kesey's novel One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. The rights to the film adaptation belonged to Kirk, but he abandoned the hope of implementing the project, so he handed them over to his son. The film surpassed all expectations, winning five Oscars and bringing fabulous profits to the Douglas dynasty. Since then, our hero has acted as a producer in many films in which he starred. In 1977, Michael married the daughter of an Australian diplomat, Deandra Luker, and a year later they had a son, Cameron. According to both spouses, their life together was like a volcano. It subsided for a while, then erupted with terrible force. And there were a lot of infidelities. Deandra said in an interview that she once caught her husband with her friend, but each time she forgave him. 
1978, the thriller The China Syndrome was released. Douglas's payout, in which amounted to $262,000, for his next film, the sports drama Running, Michael trained a lot and ran about 55 miles a week. In addition, he stopped smoking two packs of cigarettes a day and lost almost 13 pounds. Then, the movie It's My Turn came out, but a successful career had to be put on pause for several years. In 1980, Douglas was seriously injured at a ski resort and returned to the screens only in 1983 with the crime thriller The Star Chamber. It then became widely known, unlike his next work, the adventure film Romancing the Stone. Michael, who also became the producer, bought the script for $250,000, and as a result, the box office around the world exceeded $85 million. Equally successful was the sequel titled The Jewel of the Nile in 1985, although Douglas took part in the sequel without much desire. Soon, the musical A Chorus Line was released on the screens, and in 1987, the world saw two hits at once, Fatal Attraction and Wall Street. For the former, Douglas received $13 million, and for the later, two major film awards, a Golden Globe and an Oscar. In addition, the role of the stock market shark and concurrently the main villain ironically inspired many people to make a career in economics and the stock market. In 1989, Michael presented to the audience the crime thriller Black Rain and the comedy The War of the Roses. In the latter, he worked with his friend Danny DeVito. Then he produced several films including the action movie with Jean-Claude Van Damme, Double Impact, and starred in the military drama Shining Through. But the absolute hit of 1992 was the thriller Basic Instinct, for which Douglas received 15 million. My sex life's actually pretty shitty since I stopped seeing you. Start developing calluses. According to Michael, shooting the sex scene with Sharon Stone was torture because they had to repeat the choreography for 10 hours of the shooting day for five days in a row. In addition, the actor forbade shooting himself naked from the front. By the way, he performed almost all the car stunts on his own. The role of the detective from Basic Instinct became one of the brightest in Douglas's career. But he didn't get stuck in one role. In the next movie, Falling Down, he appeared in the image of an average guy who cannot stand the injustice of the world. To participate in the project, Michael canceled a family vacation and later called this role his favorite. Then, the actor added several roles to his filmography in the film's Disclosure with a payout of $12 million and American President. While working on the latter, Douglas discovered a distant relationship to U.S. President Richard Nixon and both Bush, and the payout amounted to $15 million. His intuition for hits didn't let the actor and producer down. Each of his next projects was a great success. For example, the adventure film The Ghost and the Darkness and the thrillers A Perfect Murder and The Game, for each of which Michael received $20 million. Oh no, you've got to be kidding. What is happening? This is what I was trying to explain to you. This is a, uh, a game. Meanwhile, big changes were taking place in his personal life. Since the mid-90s, their marriage with Deandra was a conformity and they just couldn't agree on the terms of the divorce. Even the marriage contract didn't make the task easier because Deandra wanted to increase the amount of compensation and Michael wanted to reduce it. At the same time, he was invested in a new relationship. In 1998, at the screening of The Mask of Zorro, he saw Catherine Zeta-Jones and was so fascinated by her that he immediately declared his desire to become the father of her children. Later, the actress would admit that she immediately fell in love with him but didn't want to have an affair with the taken man. However, six months after they met, they would spend hours on the phone talking about everything in the world. After that, the relationship developed rapidly. On New Year's Eve of 1999, Catherine was already pregnant and Michael offered his beloved a long-prepared ring with a 10-carat diamond surrounded by 28 smaller stones. Its cost is estimated from one to two million dollars. The actor's first wife then, without sarcasm, told reporters that he would have to change his religion to one where polygamy is allowed. But Douglas was already ready to agree to all DeAndre's conditions. So in 2000, he paid her $45 million and left her a mansion in Beverly Hills, as well as half of the estate in Majorca. 
By the way, Michael tried several times to find a buyer for his luxury property, but since the ex-wife remained the co-owner, he took it off the market. In August of the same year, Catherine gave birth to their first child, Dylan Michael, and in November, they had a gorgeous wedding of the year, which cost the actor $2 million. However, $1 million was covered because the magazine OK paid for an exclusive photo from the magnificent celebration. Interestingly, Michael and Catherine were born on the same day with a difference of 25 years. Personal affairs didn't prevent Douglas from actively acting and producing. So, in the same year 2000, he presented the movie Wonder Boys and together with his young wife appeared in the thriller Traffic. These two projects brought our hero 15 million. This was followed by the films One Night at Nicole's, Don't Say a Word, The In-Laws, and It Runs in the Family. The latter involved representatives of three generations of the Douglas family, Kirk and Diana, their son Michael and grandson Cameron. In 2003, the family of Michael and Catherine welcomed their daughter, Caracetta. After her birth, the celebrities moved to Bermuda, where our hero's mother is from. For more than 10 years, the couple lived in a quiet life, leaving only for filming, and the children didn't even know what their parents were doing. Their daughter recalled that as a child, she was sure that the main occupation of her dad's life was to bake pancakes for breakfast and please mom. The couple still owns this cozy nest, although they tried to sell it in 2019 for $10.6 million but changed their minds. After a short break in his creative activity, Douglas returned to the screens in 2006 with the films The Sentinel, You, Me and Dupree, and a year later presented the comedy drama King of California. Then came the movies Ghosts of Girlfriends Past, Beyond a Reasonable Doubt, Solitary Man, and the continuation of the 1987 drama Wall Street's Money Never Sleeps. You're the ninja generation. No income, no job, no assets. You got a lot to look forward to. <laughs> a busy period in his career again coincided with the vessitudes of private life. His eldest son Cameron was a drug addict, and our hero had to forbid him to approach his family. In 2009, Cameron was accused of smuggling, which led him behind bars. By the way, Michael himself also suffered from addiction and in the 90s received treatment in a rehab clinic. His son also managed to get over a dangerous addiction, and Catherine Zeta-Jones at that difficult time became a real support for the family. But soon, another misfortune struck them. In 2010, Michael was diagnosed with laryngeal cancer. Catherine did everything to help her husband heal, but soon she couldn't stand the stress, and she started showing signs of bipolar disorder. Her periods of incredible activity were replaced by the deepest depression, and Michael didn't take his wife's problems seriously at all. These events almost put an end to their union, and they seriously talked about divorce, but still managed to make up. In 2012 to 2014, such films as Haywire and So It Goes, Beyond the Reach, and the biographical drama Behind the Candelabra were released. In the latter, the actor played the legend of American show business pianist and entertainer Liberace. And this role became a real gift for him after his illness. He trained for a long time, recreating the voice of his character and studied his piano playing technique. Also during this period, the actor starred in the comedy drama Last Vegas, along with Robert De Niro and Morgan Freeman. It's just winding up a little too fast, and I'm feeling old and alone. In 2015, Michael joined the Marvel Cinematic Universe playing the role of Hank Pym in the movie Ant-Man. He appeared in the same image in other projects, Ant-Man and the Wasp, Avengers Endgame, and the animated series What If. In addition, during the period, the actor starred in the action movie Unlocked, the thriller Animal World, took part in the voiceover of the children's series Green Eggs and Ham, and presented the series The Kominsky Method. For this comedic role, which is rare for him, Douglas received another Golden Globe. Fine. It is fine. Which is what I said. No, no, you said it with an attitude, and you said, fine. Forgive me. Fine. Jesus, let's just order. Fine. In addition, our hero worked as a producer on the prequel to One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, the series rashed about a psychiatric hospital nurse. At the end of 2018, Michael Douglas's star was unveiled on the Hollywood Walk, dedicated to the 50th anniversary of his career. The actor admits that only work helps him keep in shape and to be fit, and he has a lot of projects. In February 2023, the premiere of the fantastic action movie Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania, took place, 
where Douglas again played Hank Pym. The filming of the series Franklin About American President Benjamin Franklin has already begun, and work is underway on a historical series about the relationship between two other presidents, Reagan and Gorbachev. Neither age nor illness affected Douglas's intelligence, and he was still surprising others with his ability to instantly remember the names of people he sees for the first time, and to notice the slightest nuances that distinguish the manner of the interlocutor's behavior. He loves golf and Formula One, and also does a lot of charity work. As the UN peace envoy, he is on a mission to draw the world's attention to nuclear disarmament and the protection of human rights. Philanthropy Douglas's family affair through the registered fund, they send money to various organizations. The entire inheritance from Kirk Douglas of $61 million was also sent to a charity, especially since Michael's fortune greatly exceeds his father's capital. It is estimated at $350 million earned as an actor and producer. In addition, Douglas invests. However, after the 2008 crisis, when he lost about 35-40% to 40 of his fortune, Michael became more conservative in investments. Douglas owns a valuable real estate portfolio with assets all over the world, which he gradually sells for his own benefit. He owned a plot of land with an area of more than 12 acres in Westchester County, New York, which he bought in 2015 for $11.3 million and sold in 2019 for $20.5 million. Around the same time, he and Catherine paid only $4.5 million for a house in the wealthy suburb of Irvington in New York State. The three-story Georgian mansion has eight bedrooms, 12 bathrooms, several living rooms and dining rooms, an indoor swimming pool, and a picturesque view of the Hudson River. Douglas and his wife also own a large apartment in New York City overlooking Central Park. The 15-room penthouse includes a master bedroom and a cozy library. In 2021, the property was put up for sale, but apparently hasn't found its buyer yet. The actor can rarely be seen in commercial advertising. The exception is the German electronic stock trading company Comdirect. But the most interesting one is the 60-second video for the FBI, in which Michael appeared as his character from Wall Street. It is known that Douglas owns cars of different brands and times, from vintage to modern, in particular the Mercedes-Benz Army-type car and the Toyota Prius. Now, the Douglas acting dynasty is continued by Michael's eldest son, Cameron. But so far, his films haven't enjoyed great success. And which movie with this actor do you like the most? Okay. 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 If you liked the video, leave a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything interesting.